So everything he was bringing out, did y'all see anything wrong with what he was just bringing out, right? What's up? Ask you a question, all right? What is what is sin? In a, in a sense, that's true. You said you commit a crime, right? But it's not just any crime. Okay, we're gonna deal with that. So. You said sin is a crime, right? What do you think sin is, bro? Sin is something you're not supposed to go you know, against. It's like basically, if you keep doing the right thing on a daily basis, uh -huh. it's something you're not supposed to do. That's sin. Right, you're absolutely correct. But now you have to figure out what is it specific. Like I said, it's a crime. That's a perfect word right there. I like that. It's a crime against a specific person, though. Because me, um, like I said, cursing. Cursing, you can't find that in the Bible saying that's a sin. However, it tells you not to use offensive words. I'm going to show you exactly what the Bible says a sin is, right? So read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. Bring it out. Whosoever commit of sin. So the topic is sin, right? It says whosoever commit of sin. Read. Transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So it says sin is the transgression of the law, which is in the Holy Bible. So like I said, it's a crime. It's a crime against God. You sleeping your brother, that's a sin. You sleeping with women, that's a sin. If you're not comparing, right? So as a nation of people, we are stuck in sin due to our condition as of right now, right? I'm going to show you. Right. I'm going to show you in the Bible that it shows you how to prolong your days. When you come out of sin, like, say, for example, right, like you just went over uh, smoking weed, right? If you were to stop smoking weed and use it for its natural purpose, would you prolong your days or would you make your days shorter? You would make it longer, right? So if you were to eat the proper foods, right? Like, everybody knows that pork is not good for you, right? But we eat it anyway. So what do we do? We shorten our days. So in the Bible, it tells you that when you come away from sin, it actually will help you live longer. So we're going to, like I said, I'm going to get to that point you said everybody sin. Watch this. Read that. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse, verse, 8, verse 46. Bring it right. out. If they sin against thee, uh -huh. for there is no man that sinneth not. So we understand that there's no man that's perfect right now. But there's a difference between knowing that you're not perfect and striving to be perfect. You see what I'm saying? Read that. Bring it out. And thou be angry with them. So when we sin, he's angry with us, right? Read. And deliver them to the enemy. And so right now, do we have our own land? Do black people manufacture anything? Everything that you have on right now, right? Who does you have to go to get that from? The store. Who do you think own that store? White. The white people. You ain't got to say Caucasian, man. We already know who it is. It's the white man, right? So as a nation of people, because we sinned, he became angry with us and put us where we're at now, right? So read. So that they carry them away captives unto a land of the enemy far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. He said, yet. But although everybody sins, it says you have to bethink yourself. So that means, okay, I just sinned. Do I continue to sin? Do you continue to sin? Yeah, uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean you're going to sin anyway? So, okay, let me ask you a question. Sin is the breaking of God's law. So, a sin is, okay, if I, let me see. If I spit on the ground, is that a sin? That's not a sin, right? So, it's specific things that are sins. Like he read you earlier, smoking weed out of its natural use, that's a sin. Sleeping with women that you don't plan on marrying, that's a sin. It's specific thing. Everything that's a sin is written in the Bible right here. Anything that you can consider, that you would consider a sin, is in the Bible. So, 
uh, the difference between what you're saying, like I say, every man is sin, right? But the difference between the normal man and the men of purple out here is we know when we sin and we try to correct it. That's and we right. do not try to do it willfully. Some people, they know what sin is and they still do it. Like right now, y'all know that smoking is a sin if you're doing it outside of the natural purpose. So guess what? You know and you go do it, then that's when God will hold it against you. But what you don't know, that's when he don't hold it against you. See what I'm saying? So look at that. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. For if we sin willfully. Do what? Sin willfully. Willfully is when, like I said, you know and you still do it, right? So God's going to hold that against you, Reese. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain of no more sacrifices for sin. So now y'all have the knowledge. I'm just keep using and smoking for an example. The brother gave y'all the knowledge on smoking, right? So Christ is not going to save you if you continue to smoke after the thing. There's no saving. It said if you sin willfully. Did I ask you a question? Like, did that answer your question? Yeah, a little bit, but you know, I, I always, I always, you know, I ain't playing with the things, I always ready to do it. I know, like, in my head, like, you know, I gave my own, uh, cause I, I'm, I was so tough in this thing. Yeah. That's what we all have to do. Uh -huh. So how do you change? So you said somebody showed you how to change. How do you change? Because change is, like say for instance, right? People get baptized in the Christian church. If you get baptized and you were stealing before you come out and you're still stealing, is that change? Right. So men out here, we are a prime example of change, right? Like I said, you got game bangers, you got basketball players, you got ex four mothers, right? We change. Men out here have one wife, we take care of our kids, we don't smoke weed, we have jobs, we don't work for the Sabbath. So change is a process, but it takes action, right? It's not just saying, I'm gonna change the next day, get up, hold up, hold So change for y'all, see, I told y'all smoke, right? What would change be? Stop smoking. That's change. Now, it might take a while, we understand that. But that's the process that you have to take. That's right. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. This is change. I'm gonna show you the change that you must go, all right? Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So it said repent and be converted. Repenting is stop smoking weed. Stop sleeping with multiple women. Stop eating pork. That's in the Bible. He showed you about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is not on Sunday like the Christian church show you. It's on Saturday. That's right. You must right. not eat or not eat. You must not cook, buy, or sell or work. That's change. Whenever you stop doing what you were doing and you start doing what the Bible says, that's change, right? That's right. Yeah. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Uh -huh. That your sins may be blotted out. That again, one more time. That your sins may be blotted out. So everybody does sin, but they can be blotted out. That's if you want to stop sin. Like I said, you may like I may not have known that sinning or smoking was a sin, but you know now. So that sin will not be blotted out if you continue to do that. But it can be if you change, right? So give me Psalm 19 to 7 one more time. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the laws of God is what's going to change. I don't know who told you to change, but what plan of action did they take to help you change? Because you can see we're taking action to help young men change. We're out here showing you what you must do, right? So now you have to realize that Either you change or you don't change to get your sins blotted out. You see what I'm saying? So get 1 Corinthians 11 and 1 real quick. Let me show you another thing, right? You might not know. You might not know. So what we have to do, we have to show you so that you can change. You see what I'm saying? Because this is love. If your mama, if you walk out the house, right, and you got something on your eye, and your mama don't say nothing, she look you dead in your face. Does she love you? So we look at y'all in your eye, we see that y'all have things wrong. We can understand it. You might not know it's wrong. But what we have to do, we have to show you that it's wrong so that you can change. You know what I'm saying? So read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I 
also am of Christ. So we ask y'all to follow us the same way that we follow Christ. Can you, can you see the Christ in us? Can you see us trying to keep God's commandments and teaching our people? That's see the right. unity out here? Bring we, it out. Right, absolutely. And that's how you know a true disciple, a true prophet, according to the Bible. Because the Bible says, real quick, hold that, get Luke 14 and 23 real quick. I'm going to show you a, that it, what we're doing is in the Bible. Y'all listening, this is in the Bible. So that's how you know a true disciple of Christ. That's why we actually ought to follow us the same way we follow Christ. Read it. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant. So we are the servants of Christ, right? Read. Go out into the highways and hedges. The where? Highways and hedges. Where? Highways and hedges. No, the church. Highways and hedges. Where are we at right now? Are we not on the highways and hedges right now? So that's in the Bible. That's how we, we're showing y'all that this is a true book. The Bible is a true book. And that's how we change it. Right. I'm 21 years old. I'm not too much older than y'all. So if this Bible didn't change my life, I would be walking around doing whatever I wanted to do, right? But these men around me, they helped push me to the Bible. And that's why I can teach y'all the way I teach y'all because the Bible changed my life. That's um, right. So give me, uh, go back to uh, first one. And compel them to come in. And that's what we're doing. Because the only way that you're going to learn how to change is if somebody teaches you. That's what we're doing. I'm compelling y'all right now to change. Stop smoking. Stop sleeping with multiple women. Because you might get lung cancer or you might get to some AIDS or you know what I'm saying. Anything, right? So go ahead to 1 Corinthians real quick. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 1. Uh -huh. But be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I will have you know. I want y'all to know, read. That the head of every man is Christ. So you got man, right? The head of the man, who did the Bible just say the head of man is? Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. So who's the head of the woman? The man, right? So anything that y'all hear about 50, 50, 75, 25, it don't matter. The man in the relationship is always supposed to be over his woman. You see what I'm saying? Read. And the head of Christ is God. So you got God, Christ, man, woman. Read. Every man praying or prophesying. Y'all are young men in the midst of praying and prophesying. Right? We're reading the Holy Bible. Right? Read. Having his head covered. Doing what? Having his head covered. Doing what? Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Who is the head of y'all? Who? Christ, right? So you dishonor him by doing what? Having his head covered. So how would you honor Christ? You dishonor him by having your head cut up, covered. How would you honor him? Who? Right. So would you do that and change? You ain't doing it. Ain't, ain't. You say that's not what that means? Oh, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Did your grandma tell you something out of the Bible? What's she say? Uh, why do we sin? Get Proverbs 1 and 5. I'm gonna show you why we sin. I'm going to show you right here. I promise you I'm going to show you. Read Proverbs 1 and 5. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. A wise man will hear. A what? A wise man will hear. So wise men will hear. When being taught, they will listen. Read. And will increase learning. That's why we die, because we don't like to listen. We are hard-headed people. We are rebellious people. That's so right. First Corinthians 11. That's why we die. Bring it out. It's simple. I tell you to stop eating pork because the Bible tells you to stop and that it's healthy for you. We don't listen. We like to eat this stuff. People smoke to get what a 10 minute high. Let them know, we let them know you may get lung cancer, you might get this, you might get that. But we still do it. That's called hard right? So read that again. Verse 3. But I will have you know 
that the head of every man is Christ. So I'm trying to start your steps to repentance. I'm trying to change you right now through the Bible. So it says the head of the man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. Y'all know that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, is the one that's going to save you, right? Yes. So somebody's going to save you. If a fireman comes into a house, he's going to save you. And he says, hey, take this. And you say, no, I'm going to go this way. Are you going to get saved? Same thing with Christ. If Christ tells you to do something and you don't do it, you think you're going to get saved? So let's see what Christ telling us to do. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So us, in the midst of praying and prophecy, you may not have your head covered and think that Christ is going to save you. So do y'all think y'all can change and take your hats and hoods off? Would you do it? I mean, your first Samuel 2 or 3 with me. It's about action. Y'all ain't even took the action to uncover your hair yet. Y'all ain't bald. I know you ain't bald here. Oh, 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 it's simple, bro. The thing is, you're not verse 3 and 5. Okay. That's the thing. We can't think differently. All of us, you think all of us think differently out here, or you think we think on one mind, one body? So the only way that you're going to change is if That's you get around people bro. that think the same. If you think differently, you're not going to change. Right. That, that don't make no sense. It absolutely does. But like I said earlier, a wise man will hear. So I'm reading you what you should be listening to, right? What you hear in heart. That's up to you. Now you see, you see, he took his hat off. Say you gave your heart to God. I'ma show you. I'ma I'm gonna show you. It's not gonna be me. We're reading the Holy Bible, right? The Bible will call you a liar if you're lying. You know that, right? So I'ma see if you actually gave your heart to God. Now I just read a commandment. That was a commandment that Brett kept. Right? Y'all walking together, but y'all don't agree on the same thing, right? So I'm gonna show you. According to the Bible, if you gave your heart to God, you know what I want? Uh, right. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 4. Yeah. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know God. He that hath given his heart to God. Read. And keep him not his commandments. Read that from the top again. I'm sorry. Read it again. So, he that saith, I know him. So you say you know God, right? You gave your heart to him. Of course. I would have been dead. I would have been dead. Right, let's see what the Bible, not necessarily, not necessarily. I'm gonna get to that. It said, if you say you know God, right, read. And keep him not his commandments. And do what? Keep him not his commandments uh -huh. is a liar. What did the Bible just call him if he's not keeping God's commandments? So he took his hat off. That was a commandment of God, right? Did you take your hat off? Did you take your hat off? So what did the Bible just call you? That's what the Bible said, right? Verse 5. Verse 5, but whoso keepeth his words, like Brad did, he took his hood off, no sweat, read. In him, verily is the love of God per perfect. That's, that's who God has given, who have given their heart to God. If you ain't keeping his commandments, God don't know you. Get uh, John 4 and 22. Because the only way we're going to get to know God is by listening and hearkening unto his word. We've been reading the Holy Bible ever since we got out here. Right. Right? We ain't been saying nothing out of our whole mind. So the only way you're going to change is by listening and hearkening unto the word of God. Uh, the book of John, chapter 4 and verse 22. He what? Because, like I said earlier, change is about action. So he took the action to take it off his head, right? You haven't taken that action. So as of right now, you are in the midst of sin. And you're doing it willfully. So Christ is, he might not come and say, now you have grace. But as of to this day, you have that knowledge. So if you don't change, Christ is not going to come and save you. See what I'm saying? But you make an excuse. What's the excuse for not taking your hood off, bro? Why you won't take it off if it's a commandment that Christ gave you? Okay, what, what you know, bro? Tell me what you know. Uh -huh.
don't deal with the Christian church. That's a whole different, we don't correspond with that at all. The Christian church is full of lies. That's right. So you gotta come with us something else. White supremacy. That white man right there, that came with the Christian church. Well, we, I'm just letting you know the Christian church has no type of corresponding, it don't matter over it. We Good thing. Good thing. Did you know they made a, a book on, about like us teaching us how to be a Christian? Yeah. Teaching us how, you know, you know how to obey God? Right. They did that in slavery. When that, all that right there was based on that man right there. Yeah. That's, that right there comes behind that. You see what I'm saying? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.